I attempted to beat all of TDS's dual lane maps. These are specialized arenas which have two paths rather than the regular one. Enemies are split evenly among them, but having to divide your tower's placement still makes these maps much harder. So the first of the six maps I joined was Candy Valley for one of the weirdest games that TDS have played. I started off by placing a gold quick boss on the left path while my teammate placed a soldier on the right. And for the next 10 waves, the mana tower is doubled, but with the rest of the team farming, we were starting to struggle. And tensions start to escalate as maximum place to pursue, which upset another teammate. Unfortunately, our team chemistry wasn't exactly great, but later in wave 19, a ranger was placed in midair, which isn't really how the game normally works, but at the time I thought it might just be a placement glitch, which are pretty common in certain maps. I hadn't placed very many farms, so I focused on getting lows to level 3 while my teammates focused more on defending, but then more oddities occurred, like this pursuit placed sideways, and it also flew on an incorrect axis, or this commander on a cliff, which I later realized was actually three commanders all inside of each other. These commanders would continuously and perfectly chain Call of Arms for the rest of the game. I just worked on getting max accelerators one by one, while my teammate placed more and more rangers in continuously impossible positions. For the record, he did tell me the secret method to do the glitch, but personally I couldn't replicate it. And moving through the rest of the game, with a ton of rangers, excels, and pursuits, we comfortably killed the Fallen King, winning the first map. But even after winning, my glitching teammate showed some more tricks, like placing a tower way out of bounds and moving it while doing so, stacking five pursuits on top of each other sideways, all the while still looping call of arms. I then got into a Badlands game, the classic two lane map and also one of the hardest, mainly because of the path structure, with both paths being pretty short and their intersection being very close to the base itself. One teammate had brought Swarmer for early game defense, a pretty rare tower, and I adopted a similar strategy to the previous game, upgrading gold quick bosses and farming, but as the game continued things started to get very dangerous. The shadow boss literally went inside of the base, only dying by a tiny margin. I got my farms to level 3, upgraded more quick bosses, placed some excels, and even a few rangers. It's a tower I don't normally use, but I think it's huge range is pretty good for these dual lane maps. Wave 30 arrived, bringing the tank, a common ender of runs. And similar to the shadow boss, it got extremely close to our base, but we did barely kill it. From there I continued to place towers, but it became apparent that the northwards path was severely lacking. Really we were only carried by all around good towers, and we did manage to reach wave 40, where luckily the Fallen King came out of the southwest path, where we had a large concentration of accelerators, and as it progressed on, I kept placing as many towers as possible, and with the help of some of my teammates abilities, we ended up triumphing pretty comfortably. The next map was one I wasn't familiar with, Space City, and it's an interesting map, with two very long paths and an early connection between the two, but there's also the trade-off that the placement space is pretty awkward, with only these small meteors. With only two teammates in the game, we ended up doing Molten Mode, which did make things a bit easier. I placed a Gold Crook at the root of the path, and farmed, actually getting all of them to max level. My teammate had placed enough militants early to kill the bosses and hiddens, and I placed some max level quick bosses near the start of each path. And with some supportive towers, we didn't have much trouble on either path, leading us to an eventual win against the molten boss. Next was the classic map Winter Stronghold. This one is interesting because the two paths are almost intertwined, in a perfectly symmetrical fashion. This meant that if placed in certain spots, towers could have enough range to hit multiple lanes. Quick bosses' bodyguards are also very good here, as they can shoot the zombies while safe safely being on a completely different path. I had also replaced Ranger with Gold Minigunner since there wasn't a lot of cliff space, and I actually ended up going AFK halfway into the game, yet we still survived. And after spamming accelerators for the rest of the game, we triumphed. I then moved on to a solo beginner game on Infernal Abyss. Beginner mode is actually harder than it seems, especially on this map. It has 10 less waves than other modes, and you have to deal with stronger zombies much earlier. You get speedies on wave 3, on normal boss on wave 7, and mysteries on wave 11. The one upside to the mode is that you do get a very good amount of money. And since I was playing solo, the amount was even higher. I was able to farm a bit and level my quick boss. On wave 16, the slow boss got a lot further than felt comfortable. Eight waves later, however, I got three speedy bosses for mysteries, where one of them actually got past all of my towers, and I had to quickly place some minis at the back just to save the run. But luckily, that was about as scary as it got, and as I placed more towers over the next waves, I comfortably got to wave 30. The path layout here is ideal as the two intersect early and have a gap in between perfect to place towers, which made the final boss very easy, meaning there is only one final map left, Gilded Path, the newest dual lane map. We had 4 people in the elevator, but only 3 in the game, which immediately set us at disadvantage for Fallen Mode. This map is themed after the removed Golden Game Mode, featuring the various golden enemies and Golden Titan itself in states of ruin. It's also one of the more interesting maps, with only a brief intersection between the two paths. I placed a crook near the front and set it to strongest targeting, so it would target and chip down the tanky zombies, which would be finished off by my teammate soldiers in the back. One player placed a minigunner, which took a bit pressure 
off and allowed me to farm more. I put DJ and two accelerators in the first loop, trying to cover each path, while my teammates focused on the back end of the map. This positioning was very awkward, and when the glitches spawned, they got very close to ending the run. But as we made past each successive wave, we got closer and closer to wave 30, until finally, after killing the initial zombies, the tank dude. spawned. I had one max XL, and with my teammates' minigears near the back, I knew it would be close. And that it was, as we did manage to die, losing on Gilded Path. Please subscribe, dual lane maps suck.